morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other health care practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human body is a healing system, a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you at 844-236-6010. We welcome your calls. If you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. And if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase products or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website. Brightsideben.com or criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com. And of course, you can call the phone team at 866 735 2470, and they can help you out that way too. 866-735-2470. And for you guys who are interested in some connoisseur high-end premium gourmet top-of-the-line skin health products made with 100% active and functional ingredients, no fillers, no water, no wax, no oil, no silicon, no preservative, no perfume or fragrance, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. Check out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel. If you're dealing with dark spots or acne, blemishes, or you just want an all-around anti-aging product, Retinol 5% Gel, and it pairs up perfectly with our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, which I've been working on for decades, perfecting in my compounding pharmacy. Made it originally for burns and for cuts and for scrapes and for healing. And for folks who had some severe surgical trauma, skin surgical trauma, works wonderfully as a general anti-aging product, also as a healing product. Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream works perfectly with our Retinol 5% Gel. Of course, check out the Truth Serum and Truth Balm, too. Truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Okay. Welcome back to The Bright Side. We're talking about the steroid hormones, the youth and fertility hormones, the PPD hormones, our stress management hormones. This whole subject of hormones is really, really important to understand if we're going to understand health. Health is really, in many, many ways, about hormones. Everything else acts to support the activity of the hormones. The hormones are it. The hormones, the chemicals that we call hormones are the connection between the mind, the emotions, and our physical world, our physical reality, and how the body is created, how the body shows up. It's the bridge. The hormones are the connector between mind, between emotions, and between our reality or our world in a physical sense, our, 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 our sights and sounds and tastes and touches and, uh, and uh, smells, our five senses, or how we see the world is turned into the human body via the action of the hormones. That makes them critically important, super unbelievably important. Every thought we think, every feeling we feel, every minuscule physiologic change that occurs in our environment creates a hormone really zillions of hormones actually. Every sight we see creates zillions of hormones and zillions of hormone secretions. Every thought we think or feeling we feel, every morsel of food we put in our body, every change in oxygen, whatever, every single thing that happens to the body initiates a hormonal effect and this is how the body is created. 
thought, feeling, physical become, become the body at the level of the hormone. They become the hormone and then they become the body. Specifically, it all happens at the level of the cell, the minuscule level that we all ignore when we go to the doctor, that we all ignore in our day-to-day -day life. This is truly, uh, I don't want to say the, because there's a lot of amazing, miraculous things in our world, but it's hard to come up with something more miraculous, more utterly jaw-droppingly, stunningly miraculous and unlikely godly, divine, than the, the, the cell. The cell. It's all about the cell. We don't get taught that because our ability to perceive things isn't such that we can actually even see a cell or detect a cell. Cell's invisible. We can't even, we can't even really imagine it. But it behooves us to try because if we just begin to ponder on what the heck is going on with a cell with all of its millions upon millions of chemical reactions and compartments and movements and actions and things that are happening in there all without our participation well without our knowledge i should say we're participating of course but without our knowledge it is absolutely stunningly miraculous so anyway the hormones interact with the cell like a lock, like a key fits into a lock. A hormone's like a key. It goes into a little lock on the cell, turns, uh, turns on, uh, on the lock or, or opens it up, and chemistry happens. You can think of it like a plug in a socket. A circuit is completed. You put the plug in the socket and a circuit is completed, stuff happens. No matter what, a muscle cell will muscle, a kidney cell will kidney, a liver cell will liver, a stomach cell will stomach. All of these activities that these cells do and there's hundreds, there's 200 plus of these cells, is all initiated by the action of a hormone. The hormone is the link between what we think and feel and do and sense and the cell itself. It makes the cell do things based on all of these things that are our environment. The word hormone means I arouse to activity. It means I turn on. I, they're, they call them, uh, biologists call them cellular messengers. These are messengers. They send messages from the environment, messages from our brain, messages from our heart, in terms of our emotions and our feelings, to the cell. That's how the cell perceives the world, through the hormones. And life is about the cell. Health is about the cell. Disease is about the cell. A doctor doesn't tell us this. Medicine, the modern medicine never talks about the cell. They talk about two areas. See, there's three things. There's the outside of the cell, there's the cell, and then there's the inside of the cell. The outside of the cell, that's the mechanics, that's the tissue, that's the muscles and, and the organs and the things that we can see. That's the outside part of the cell. The inside part of the cell are all the little molecular interactions. Medicine, old time medicine, worked outside the cell. And we still, of course, have old time medicine, but the, the, the art of medicine is really about tissues and it's about organs. It's about the outside part of a cell or, or the bigger, the macroscopic version of a cell. I don't want to say outside because it's made up of cells, but the macroscopic version of a cell. The modern medicine, the high tech medicine, the kind of medicine that you're starting to see, well, it started about 20 years ago or so, but now it's really going full blast. That's called metabolic medicine, or that's the medicine of the inside of a cell. Molecular medicine, not metabolic medicine, molecular medicine. It's the medicine of the inside of a cell. So old style medicine worked with the macro, New style medicine works with the super micro, but the, the health is right in the middle. It's at the level of the cell. It's not at the level of the inside. It's not the level of the outside. It's at the level of the cell. The cell itself. Medicine can't do anything there. They can manipulate the molecules by poisoning the cell inside the cell, and they can sure do things to the tissues, out, the macroscopic version of the cell, the organs and such. They can extract them. They can radiate them but they can't do anything at the level of a cell because a cell only needs food, it only needs oxygen, and it only needs a clean place to do its business, and there are no tools in the doctor's toolkit that can handle that. They can play around the molecules inside a cell. They can poison and radiate and extract the organs at the macro level, but they can't do anything at the level of a cell. And this is where hormones have their major, major effect at the level of a cell. And we have control over the hormones because, the, for in large part, because the hormones are responsive to our environment, to what we're eating, to what we're drinking, to what we're breathing, to what we're thinking, to what we're feeling. That's medicine. That's the true medicine. What we think, what we feel, what we eat, what we breathe, and what we drink. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. 
Okay, we are back on the bright side. Got lines open at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or formulations or skin health or if you have a success story or if you just want to contribute to our conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to check out the longevity products, you can call the bright side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. Love to have you on my team. I can help you build your business. I can help grow your business and you can help change lives and you can make money while you're doing it. 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the Brightside Ben phone team. Tell them you want to join the join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. If you want to check out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel, head over to truthtreatments.com. We also have a skin health blog at truthtreatments.com. And I also have a Facebook page, a, 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 a Truth Facebook page, The Truth with Ben. And we post on that regular, regularly as well. Okay, got lines open, 844-236-6010. We're talking about the cellular nature. I hope people aren't, I hope you guys are not turned off by the science talk. You know, I get people all the time, radio people, not, not listeners, but radio people telling me this is, I get too sciencey. It's not that I get too sciencey. It's that we have to understand certain basics if we're going to be able to be healthy, if we're going to liberate ourselves. Really, it's about liberating ourselves. Knowledge is power, and it's the, it represents freedom. It represents independence. It represents liberty from a medical model that is set up to kill us, literally, not figuratively. Set up to kill us. Does it do good things? Well, yes, of course it does. But the way it's set up with its techniques, with its strategies of poisoning the body, of radiating the body, of removing organs from the body kills us. Make no mistake about it. And it doesn't even show, not even the stuff that shows up in the statistics. Drugs shorten your life, period. End of story. There's no way they cannot shorten your life. They cost you nutrition. They cost you energy. They kill cells. They're so-called cytotoxic. There's no way it cannot cost you your life. Yes, you're not going to know it because you're going to drop dead at 70 or 80 and you'll think you had a great life maybe, but that's 20 years off your life or something. I don't know if it's 20 years, something. It can't help but do that. So the medical model, with all of its techniques, is set up to kill us. And I'm not saying that because doctors are bad people, because they're bamboozled too. It's the model. It's the paradigm. Doctors think they're doing a good thing. I'm not beating up on doctors. I have a lot of friends who are doctors, and they're good people for the most part. Like everybody else, you got your bad apples, but for the most part, they're good people. And I don't want this to be about beating up doctors. It beats about beating up the model, which like the political model, like the economic model, like the legal model are set up to disempower the individual. And so what we're talking about here is liberation, liberation, freedom from tyranny, from a medical tyranny, which by the way, the founding fathers knew all about that. Benjamin Rush was a doctor and a signatory of the, uh, of the, uh, uh, a signator of the Declaration of Independence, I believe it was, he warned about medical tyranny in the, uh, in the 18th century. Anyway, so the whole thing, the whole body is woven together with the action of hormones. All the cells, uh, health is about the cell. You got 200 different kinds of cells and 100 trillion of them. Think about that for a minute. You got 100 trillion of these things, and somehow they're all unified by the action of the hormones. The hormones are the fabric that connects everything up, and that's why they're so darn important. And that's why understanding where we control the hormones is important. The horm we have control over our hormones. That's the take-home message here. We have control over this whole thing. We spent a lot of time talking about the steroid hormones and the ketogenic diet. The ketogenic diet is a high-fat diet. High-fat diets help you make these hormones, these steroid hormones particularly. Thus, the importance of a high-fat diet. Yes, the importance of a high-fat diet. Not French fry fat, not potato chip fat, not mozzarella cheese pizza fat, but good fat, quality fat. Coconut oil, for example, butter, for example, avocado, for example, eggs, for example, fish, for example. Not cooking your fish too much. There are great uh, seeds. There are great ways to get good fats. And they're incredibly important for the production of the steroid hormones. That's why the ketogenic diet can be helpful. Now, we've been talking a lot about the fertility hormones, the PPD hormones, the, the relaxing hormones, the building hormones, the, the sexual hormones, the creativity hormones, the happy stuff. 
Those are your PPD hormones, pregnenolone, progesterone, and DHEA. Later on, we're going to talk about other hormones that are not quite as benign or quite as kind, as important as they are, of course. All hormones are important. Later on, we're going to talk about estrogen, testosterone, cortisol. These are incredibly, 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 incredibly important, and we have control in large part over those. Through the foods we eat, the air we breathe, the water we drink, the thoughts we think, and the feelings we feel. And I would throw in our spiritual connection too. That also has a major impact, a major role to play on how hormones are created because spirituality represents safety. That's what it means to be saved, by the way. Spirituality represents safety. Safety has a whole has a hormonal profile, as does lack of safety. Has a hormonal signature. There's a a hormonal song, a hormonal. Uh, there's a hormonal orchestra that plays when we're safe, and there's one that plays when we're in fear. That's why you got to stay away from these fear-inducing uh, news reports and fear-inducing talk radio and fear-inducing uh, press, the f- fear-inducing uh, newspapers, fear in- fear-inducing on uh, the Internet. you got to stay away from fear because it creates a hormonal signature that shuts things down. Love, by the way, and gratitude and peace and contentment have a completely different hormonal signature that turns things on, that builds things. The PPD hormones represent that. So the steroid hormones are critically important to understand. All hormones are, but the steroid hormones are our thriving or, or surviving hormones. They're related to whether we're going to survive or thrive. You have a whole other class of hormones, and those are called peptide hormones, and those are different. Those hormones are more related to like activities, like eating and and uh, uh, like act, day-to-day kinds of activities, eating and excreting and heartbeat and how the brain works. But as far as the long-term kinds of things, whether it's long-term survival or long-term thrival, that's the steroid hormones. They're fatty. They're more complex. They require a whole, a fully functioning fat absorption system. The gallbladder, the liver, the pancreas, the stomach, the intestine, any, any problems along these lines, including gluten intolerance, is going to mess up the steroid hormones, including celiac disease. There's a major relationship, by the way, between the ser- steroid hormones and celiac disease and intestinal disease. We always talk about fats and fat absorption on this program, how important the fatty system is, fatty vitamins. Well, guess what? The steroid hormones are derived out of this system from the fats we eat, the fatty vitamins we get, the fatty nutrients we get, as well as a fully functioning fat absorption system. That means keep your gallbladder. Do not let a doctor take out your gallbladder. Do not remove your gallbladder unless you have cancer. I mean, unless you have something, well, cancer is the only thing I can think of why you'd want your gallbladder removed. If you don't, if you don't have your gallbladder, and 500,000 of them are yanked out every year, so a lot of people do not have gallbladders, it becomes super important, super important that you focus on fat absorption, especially for women as they get older, because women are really, really sensitive to hormones as they get older. Women in general are more sensitive to hormones because of how their body is set up. But especially as they get older, the gallbladder and the liver and the intestine are super mega, mega important to understand and how to work with the fat absorption system. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back on the Bright Side right after this. All right, welcome back to the Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up. Also, brightsideben.com. And you can order Longevity products off of our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And you can check out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Balm, and Truth Serum, all at truth.treatments.com. I'm sorry, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. PepsiCo to reintroduce aspartame sweetened diet Pepsi. This is from the Wall Street Journal today. Pepsi is freaking out because nobody's drinking their Diet Coke anymore or Diet Pepsi anymore. Nobody's drinking their Diet Pepsi because, well, because they're afraid of artificial sweeteners. Nobody wants to drink that crap. So you know what they're doing? They're replacing one diet, one artificial sweetener with uh, with another. They're replacing the 
the uh, sucralose with aspartame. Nobody needs Pepsi. Sorry, Pepsi people. Nobody needs that stuff. It cannot do anything good for your body. Artificial sweetener or regular sweetener. And there's no real difference, by the way. Well, I shouldn't say that. They're both just, they're, they both have a downside. They both have very little upside, although I suppose you could say glucose has an upside, but uh, artificial sweeteners and, uh, and uh, natural sweeteners really have way more downside than upside. Oh, I love this one. This is from the University of Bath in England. Why do some cancers suddenly disappear without treatment? We've been talking about this now, for, talking about cancer for a long time. On this program, we spent a lot, uh, almost a month talking about cancer. And one of the major points about cancer, and this is one of the major points that I would tell anybody who's dealing with this scourge, this horrible disease, this horrific, horrific health challenge, is it regresses on its own. Obviously, it doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't even happen a lot, but it happens from the University of Bath. Check this out. It is hard to believe that some cancers miraculously disappear, but it does happen. Over a thousand case studies document cancer sufferers who experience spontaneous regression of their tumor. Now, there's still, there's more than that because a lot of people when they remit, they don't go to the doctor and say, hey, we remitted. They just don't go back. So the fact of the matter is, is cancer can remit. And that, to me, is the most important and powerful message anybody who's dealing with this disease should understand. Continuing, over the past 70 years, spontaneous regression has been reported in a variety of cancer types, but particularly in melanomas, horrible cancer, renal cell, that's kidney cancer, neuroblastomas, that's uh, uh, specifically of the adrenal glands, and blood cancers and nobody knows how it's done. Well, it's done with the body. The body has natural killer cells. It has cells that kill cancer. It has immune cells that fight cancer. And according to this article, epigenetics, that is nutrition, for example, also has an effect on, also has a positive effect on cancer. Epigenetic, quote, epigenetic changes cannot be excluded either, unquote. Uh, <clears throat> all right, well, here's another one, infertility, Obstetric and gynecological problems in celiac disease. Celiac disease is gluten intolerance. That's what we've been talking about here. The connection between female hormones and fats. Gluten intolerance is uh, in many ways affects how we absorb fats. It's an intestinal issue. If you have gluten, or I should, I should say celiac disease is a, a fat issue. If you have gluten intolerance, if you have gluten intolerance, it cannot help but affect your fatty hormones, particularly estrogen. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. Let's go to Christian in California. What's up, Christian? Hey, how's it going, uh, Mr. Pusa? I appreciate your time. Um, yeah, pretty much I would just like to talk about three things real quick. Um, first of all, I would just kind of want to give you an update on what you told me to do uh, before. Okay. I pretty much was, uh, yeah, I was pretty much, you know, I still sort of have the similar symptoms. Like, I'm still. What did you have? Uh, tell, I, tell, remind me. Yeah, well, basically, um, I still have my little energy, but overall, I've noticed just general improvements in my joints. Because before, the big, uh, the big um, sort of uh, symptom that I had was just basically um, just feeling like very, very tired. At least now, I'm still able to move around and whatnot. But the thing is, like after um, you advised me to sort of eat a lot of fats, which I've kind of been doing anyways, regardless of, uh, you know, whether or not I've been supplementing. Like, I've just been eating a lot of eggs. I usually eat, like, maybe 10, anywhere between 10 to uh, 15 eggs a day. And I 10 or 15? That, yeah. I, what do you notice? Yeah, but, yeah, I've noticed, like, a massive, because I, I'm, I'm a stocky guy, but I'm currently at around 210 pounds. And How tall? And that's just pretty much How tall are you? Foot five. Are you uh, muscular, like built muscular? Yeah, um, uh, I look lean, but like when I get on the scales, uh, I look like I'm about 160, but um, I, I'm 210. So that's so you carry a lot. Are you weightlifting? Are you or bodybuilder or anything like that? No, I'm a carpenter. So um, oh, you're a carpenter. You know, okay, so you're yeah. working your body. All right. So what's going on? Tell me how I can help you, Christian. Yeah, well, basically, I just want to give you an update on that. Like I still, because I was uh, mentioning before how I feel very tired, and I still do feel tired, and told me just to lay off the carbs and kind of eat a lot of fats and like I said before I've been eating a lot of fats and overall I still notice the same symptoms if anything the thing that still concerns me is just the fact that I've had um I get like as soon as I take the vitamin supplements like whether or not you know I've, I've been taking the uh, BTT the starter pack and then also I've been taking glucose gels and all of that and for some reason I feel ravenously hungry and after you I'm do thinking, 
Yeah, after I eat them, like regardless of what I'm eating, you know, before or after the fact or whatever. Interesting. My dietary, but yeah, I get very, very hungry, like ravishingly hungry. And I'm thinking maybe what sort of happening, this is to my general theory, which kind of goes to my second thing, or my second uh, statement or, you know, question that I had. I'm thinking maybe it's candida or something like that, because overall, like... Could be, but candida is not a primary thing. You can't work on candida. But what you can do is you can work on your digestive system. Candida is kind of a symptom. It's not a problem. I mean, it's not like a obviously causes problems, but it itself is not where you want to work. You want to work on the digestive system. Candida is a digestive, a candida overgrowth is a digestive response. It's a, it's a response to digest. I don't say it's the digestive. Let me rephrase that. It's a response to something that's happening in the digestive system. You follow me? Yeah, right, right. And what I'm thinking is maybe what's happening in my body, generally speaking, I don't know too much about candida, but from what I've been able to pick up here and there, um, I do have the body order kind of going on. Like I have a the body very, order, uh, the body type. You mean? You no, know, body order. Like I oh, the I odor, know. the the odor. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, though, Christian. Candida happens to everybody. If you're sick, you oh, got okay. a candida problem. Period. So don't worry about the candida. If you're sick, you're not feeling well, almost 100% guarantee you have a candida problem. But you don't want to work on the candida. The candida are like a, they're, they're like a, a, a symptom. They're a result of an underlying cause. You follow me? Right. You, don't work on right. the, uh, you don't work on the on the symptom. You don't work on the leaves of the tree. You work on the root of the tree. The candida right. are the right. leaves of the tree. You know, if you have, the candida are the flies around the garbage. You can kill right. the flies, but you still got the garbage, and you're going to get the flies back. Does that make sense? Right. Well, yeah. Well, either way, what I'm because again, like you said, I'm trying to get to the root um, cause. Of root the is the digestive I, system, I, I, Christian. Root is in the digestive system. Period. Okay. That means right. two things. Yeah. Number one, number one, it means patching up the gut, and then working right. with digestive support, eliminating problem foods. I'll, I'll go into some more specifics in a second. And number two means sugar. Sugar and the digestive system are linked, and it's no accident that candida loves sugar. That's why the candida diet is a low-sugar diet. So between sugar and the digestive system, you have your two major reasons why you're going to have candida. Those are the, what I've been saying. I, I, I call it the triangle of disease. But you could say the triangle of candida if you want, because underneath the tr everything is going to be, all symptoms is going to be this triad. So hang on. Right. We'll, Christian, we'll finish up, Christian, when we come back. Okay, don't go away. We are back on the bright side. I'm Farm Spend talking to Christian uh, about Candida. Christian, are you there, my man? Christian, Christian, Christian. Yeah, hello. Hey, hello. Christian. Yeah. yeah. So here's the deal, and I got. I'm going to move on real quickly. Okay. Uh, number one, you want to focus on the digestive system. Number two, you want to focus on sugar. These are the fundamental two points for all health challenges. So it should be as no comes no surprise. Uh, it would help you to relax the body and, and do all the adrenal things. But first and foremost, you're going to want to work at these fundamental two points. That's the digestive system and the blood sugar system. Now, with the digestive system, it sounds like you're already on your way. You're already doing stuff to patch up the gut, looking for problem foods. And main reason why people get fatigued, like the way you're describing, is because a lot of resources are being expended to deal with digestive issues. So working on the digestive system is key. Intermittent fasting would probably help you a lot. If you're not doing the ketogenic diet, you might want to consider that. Uh, and then, of course, probiotics, fermented foods, elimination, elimination diet, eliminating problem foods, all of that is really important. The second thing is stabilize the blood sugar. The fact that you're hungry after you do those supplements leads me to believe you may have some blood sugar issues. You probably do anyway because candida is a sugar thing. So regardless, focusing on the blood sugar is going to help you. That, there's two ways to do that. The main way, of course, is to reduce the intake of it, and that includes bread and pasta. See if you can notice your fatigue issues linked to specific foods that you're eating. That could be another strategy. And then also using more protein, which it sounds like you're doing already. Focus on uh, the branched chain amino acids. Those are very satisfying proteins, and they're building proteins, and that would be important for the digestive tract and just general health. Those are going to be found in whey, if you're not already doing that, uh, yeah. dairy in, in general will have BCAAs, organ meats, and eggs. BCAAs are the branched chain amino acids, and they're super important for building, for repair, and for satiety, for satisfaction. And then uh, if you're not doing coconut oil, maybe a spoon of coconut oil. And apple cider vinegar also may help you, too. Apple cider vinegar has got some really, really important energizing benefits. All right, and don't forget your deep breathing. That's always important. Uh, Christian, I want to motivate, but do you have anything else? Did, did I answer your questions? 
Well, yeah, well, like I mentioned before, like if anything concerns me, like I've been doing pretty much what you told me. And yeah. The, I just don't understand as to why, like, I should be getting enough energy from the protein and um, the fats that I'm, no, eating, I'm eating. No, no, protein can knock you out. That doesn't know how it works. Oh. No. Okay. If you're not processing your protein, that's going to knock you out. So you got to be careful with that. That's, that's what I'm telling you. Go back to the digestion issue. If you have, pro you must have some problems in the digestive system. If you have candida, constipation, loose stools, gas, bloating, heartburn, something. You got to work on that. Those are signals for you. Those are messages from your body to you, and you got to pay attention to those messages. You know what I'm saying, Christian? Does that sound familiar? Right. So, yeah. Well, so if if it's a sugar issue, then what can I? What type of uh, carbohydrate can I, that I can eat? Veggies, veggies and vegetable juices. Get yourself a Vitamix, drink lots of veggie juices. That will take care of your digestive system. It'll fill you up, and it'll give you wonderful electrical nutrients from the vegetables, and it's very energizing. One of the neat things about vegetable juices in a blender is they're electrified. The action of the, the vortex action of the blender electrifies the nutrients in the veggies. So you drink in electricity, and at the end of the day, we're electrical beings, not chemical beings. And so when you drink this electricity, whether it's in the form of a vegetable juice or in the form of a beyond tangy tangerine spun up in a vortex you're actually mm -hmm. drinking you're getting nutri nutriated without calories so you're not you're getting high amounts of nutrition electrical nutrition without your body having to work and that is extremely satisfying and extremely filling and won't cause any any kind of uh, rebound fatigue which a lot of times high nutrition does so mm -hmm. you get all the nutritional value without calories veggie juices is, is the is what I'm trying to say here and the BTT Christian I got to move here, my friend. I hope I helped you out. Thanks for your call, bro. All right, thank you. Okay, take care. All right, let's go to Robin in Oklahoma. Welcome to the Bright Side, Robin. Uh, hi, Ben. I have a hey. question about uh, potato starch. It's yeah. read a couple things that it helps you sleep, and I'm such a terrible insomniac that I would... I stay away from potatoes anyway, but I heard that potato starch could help you sleep. Uh, you heard anything where'd you hear that? I've read a couple of things online and I'm not sure how that would work necessarily uh, potato starch is a thickener I used to use it in skincare um, I don't know how that would work although uh, in in certain grains and certain vegetables perhaps potatoes I have to look this up uh, there are compounds that are sleepy time compounds called exorphins grains especially are rich in these things but not sleeping you don't have a potato starch deficiency Robin. Know know. you know what I'm saying I it's know. not like your body's missing potato starch or something there's something else going <laughs> going on you know yeah. this is a problem when we get these these crazy formulas that, that heal things and cure things and kill things we want to get to the root of the problem here now i'm guessing from the way you sound that you're peri or perimenopausal or close um oh, i'm 56 post and, okay so yeah post you're done uh, with menopause post, post okay. yeah post menopause all okay, right so we got to work on the hormone thing that's your main issue and that's secondary or follows digestive issues surprise surprise Right? right? So you got to work on the digestive thing. If you're like 80% of the women that I see who are uh, postmenopausal, you got something going on in the digestive system, probably constipation. Does that sound familiar? Uh, I wouldn't know because I take so much stuff. That okay, I well, you should find out because it's, that's a signal. That's a sign. That's your body talking to you. The body speaks to us in many ways. One of the most important ways it speaks to us is through digestion, and that means elimination, how we eliminate. Well, so I don't you, have a gallbladder, and I know. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You know, you're under serious hormonal stress. You're yeah. under serious stress. The gallbladder yeah. detox. You know, bile is a detoxifying system, not just a hormone. Uh, uh, detoxifying liquid, not just a hormonal liquid. It's not only important for the hormone system, it's important for detox. So so when you're missing a gallbladder, you're not going to be detoxing. You're not going to be absorbing the nutrients that are required for making hormones. So you're going to have a problem. So you've got to focus 100% on your fat absorption. That's where you want to be focusing. Take some melatonin before you go to bed. You probably need that too. But I don't want to make it like melatonin is a cure. It'll help you, but you still have more. You've got bigger fish to fry. Robin, you're aging rapidly with all due respect. Oh, tell Can't, me about it. I can, well, I can feel I, death I can't, approaching quickly. No, don't say that. Don't <laughs> say that. But I can see you. I can... I, I can't see you visually, but I can see you biochemically by what you're saying. 
You have to be. Because without a gallbladder, now you're, you're lo- you don't have an, a way to access your thriving hormones. So you've got to focus on fats. You should be on lecithin with every meal. You should be grinding up your fats when you eat them. And you should be only eating as little food as possible and try to, set, try to focus on what I call a mono diet, which is one type of food at, uh, one type of food at each meal or one type of food at each sitting. So you don't eat a three-course meal. Do you follow me? Mm-hmm. So just, ha- just have veggies, just have uh, something fat, avocados, just have eggs, just have fish, nothing else. No fish and potatoes or fish and rice, no mixing. You know what I'm saying? You right. got you got a mono diet. This reduces the load on the digestive system, which isn't necessarily a problem for all of us, but for somebody who doesn't have a gallbladder and who's age 56 and can't sleep, you're, you're, you're a classic, you represent a classic sign of a digestive system in distress. Or represent a classic example of a digestive system in distress. And, and so Pro- is, that, is, is one of the symptoms of that nausea all the time? Uh, hello? What do you yeah. think? Are you, do you get nauseous in your big toe? Do you get nauseous in your ear? No. Do you get nauseous in your eye? You get nauseous in your intestine, in your stomach. Yeah. You know, you get, that's a digestive, heck yeah. You got um, all the classic signs of a digestive issue. You should be fasting, do a Swero V cleanse. And by the way, the Swero V is S U E R O V I V. If you get it from longevity, S U E R O V I V. Do a Swero V cleanse. You, this is not something, uh, Robin, you want to be messing around with. You want to be doing this right away. Okay. A Swero a V cleanse. And then you want to, uh, when you start eating again, a couple days later, take two days off from food, just the Swero V. When you start eating again, eat very simply and keep track of everything. Okay. And then once you, start, uh, once you start eliminating things, when you find foods you like, make sure you use them with lecithin, especially the fatty foods, with lecithin, apple cider vinegar, the ultimate en- en- enzymes from longevity. Make sure you're on a, a well-rounded supplement program like the Healthy Start Pack. Use the nightly essence. And this is so important what I'm going to say next. Okay, I want you to hear this. Eat as little as possible for the rest of your life. Do you understand this, Robin? As yes, little as possible, you've got a majorly compromised digestive system, and the last thing you want to do is put a burden on it. Drink as much of your nutrients, too, as possible. Soups okay. and juices. Okay. 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 I got you. I got you. Are, are, okay. Take care. God bless you. Good luck Thank with everything. You. Thank you. Leroy in Atlanta, Georgia. Real quick. We only have about a minute, Leroy. Uh, I got a mitral valve prolapse. I have a cavity. I looked online and saw comfrey root. Uh, egg cell, organic egg cells, and um, for, for the cavity. Yeah, and bone broth. I wouldn't put anything in my mouth. If you have a hole in your teeth, tooth, I don't think I'd put anything in there. Why? What, no, it, what? it heals it from the inside. Oh, you're talking about eating. You took taking comfrey root. To- I see what you're saying. Oh yeah, bone broth, comfrey. And what's the other thing? Comfrey root. It says switch in your mouth for 20 minutes. I, I would stay away from that, but the protein and the minerals are what you're looking at, and you want to make sure that you're not acidic, that your saliva is is not too acidic, and it has minerals in it. Mineralization is the most important strategy for you in protein. That's all the time we have. I'm so sorry, Leroy. I, if you call back tomorrow, we'll get you. Uh, I'll answer your question more completely. Thanks for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. Thank you.